You have found this video, so you know my pain. I should better say our pain. After 10 years I am done with Unity. But now I need to find a new engine. I have already tried Unreal and Godot, but I really like C Sharp. Godot would be an option, but somehow I just can't get into it. So after a while searching the internet, I found Flux Engine. And pretty much the first statement I read about Flux Engine was this comment here that the Flux Engine is criminally underrated and with a lot of wonderful features. So it got my interest and now I will try it. I have already installed the launcher and the engine version 1.6 along with the sample files or sample projects. The first thing I noticed was the quick startup time along with some funny text that change every time the engine starts but you have to be really quick because the engine starts so fast you have barely time to read it. Now we are here, the first time in Flex Engine and the only thing I can see is a grid, black background and I guess an empty hierarchy. Yes, it looks like I can create something. It looks like I can't create here anything. Maybe inside this folder. Oh, this is not a folder, this is a file. Looks very similar. But here I can create a C sharp script and a C script. So maybe in content I can't create other stuff. Yes, here. Now I can create my first scene. That looks promising. I really love this guy. This guy is really good. It feels like you are in Unreal. Unity has some really bad first impression if you first open up. And I really like this here. And I think I need a model to create a cube. So as I expected, a transform and here is a list where I can select some meshes. They are already included. I think I go with a capsule. So it's like if you, in Unity, if you have your first player, it's always a capsule. Even with this simple texture as default texture, it already looks better than in Unity with its smooth finish. I mean, it will be replaced in any game, but it just looks a little bit nicer. So, what is material function instance? I think I begin with a material. Drag and drop works also. Uh, nice. Oh, that's not a typical material like in Unity. I think a material is same as a shader. I mean, the, how do I set the color? The properties are empty. Oh, that are the game options. That's good to know for later. But how do I can set the color? I mean, do I need to create my first shader? I already like that it's like a shader graph. I probably have to set a color. Yes, this is just a documentation. So color maybe. Yeah, that looks good. We have some different color types like vertex color and color constant. That sounds promising. Oh, here are parameters. Yes, that is what I need. Color, yes, can I rename? Yes, I can rename it. And how do I edit? Ah, property parameters. Yes, color, good. Now, can I drag that for easier? Yes, perfect. I really like it. So, save. It got already right, nice. 
Yes, now I have a white capsule like in Unity. But I don't know how to change the color. I mean, I have set the color in the shader or in the materials. I don't know how to name it. But the property tabs is empty. Okay, this is like shader graph. I can change the preview model and stuff. But how do I change the color? I mean, yes, yeah, I can change the color, but I think this is baked into the material. How to maybe material instance? Yes, this could maybe it. I mean, I probably create a material variant or something, but let me test that. If I now open this, ah, here is a parameter I can override. Okay, this is just like in Unity, a material variation. So this is very useful. I just need to get along with the workflow. I mean, it's not a bad workflow. Yes, now we have two different capsule colors or two different materials. That is nice for the first start. Before I click around pointlessly, I thought it's a better idea to start with the graphics example. So I can explore the features the engine have. And I think we should start the game. And wow, that, that was really quick. Okay. I did not expect to be instantly in the game. This is instant, this is very nice. I don't know if a larger scene needs more time, but I rather start with zero seconds delay instead of 10 seconds delay, like in Unity with an empty scene. I like the look of the global illumination. Ambient occlusion, it looks very soft. It looks better than Unity, I think. With Unity's ambient occlusion, I often had some artifacts. I must say, I do really like this. It's been a few years since I used screen space reflections in Unity, but I must say, this looks better. Depth of field. Okay, this looks a bit weird. The edges are very highlighted. I don't think this should be so. Room, lens flare, wow, nice lens flare. In Unity you would have to make your own or buy it from the asset store and this comes with the engine, it's very nice. Here are some post effects volumes. Realistic sky, oh very nice animated sky. I must say the overall look of the engine is very good. I mean, yes, this is extra graphics feature scene, but in comparison, if you open the Unity default scene, it looks a bit dull. And this engine is like Unreal. You open the first scene and even the first scene looks good. The last thing I want to explore are the scripts or the scripting in general. In Unity, it's a pain if you have to recompile your scripts and here I hope it got faster because the entering the play mode is really fast. So these are the scripts used in this example. Oh yeah, one thing I already did uh, change is on the tools and options I did set this to system default because it was default and default was Visual Studio Code. And for me, system default should open. Let's test that. I hope it does. So Rider takes a bit longer to load, but I like it more. So you have your script and your default inputs. It looks very similar to Unity. I mean, you have your fi uh, fixed update 
and your update and so on. I want to show what, what Awake Destroy. And I like it, you can just override it. And Unity is always this methods that are magical called from somewhere and you don't know what method it's currently you can use. I mean, Rider does help you, but I like it more to have a method to override. After 10 years in Unity, you know what method you can use, but I really like this. Maybe I can jump. Let's explore the player. Here we have, the, here's the player script. Okay, we say we can jump in this example and okay, here we can change the jump force. But I think I need another example because the jump force is here already variable. Maybe let's change just these values here, the min and max uh, pitch values for the view. Let it to 20, let it set to 20. Okay, no recom, ah, here, recompiling scripts. With roughly two seconds, it was fast, but I think it will be slower when the project is growing and you have more source code to compile. So the applied change has worked. I can only look 20 degrees up and down. Okay. Now let's explore the little first person shooter. So we have a little game example noch at in the end. It's just a small shooter game where you can shoot at bottles and cubes. Character controller and movement speed more max. So yes, we can faster. It's, it's just like Unity. I mean, what I don't like about Godot is this abstraction between game and editor. And here it's like in Unity, you have your scene view. You can go to the editor. You can drag your, oh, looks funny. I like this approach way more because you can watch your game while your player character does something in a cutscene. You can watch the cutscene while the player character is locked down or something. I mean, yes, you can use a fly cam or something, but not always. If you want to follow my journey with the Flux engine or want to see more content in the future, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Bye for now and happy coding.